When you visit Greens Pond, you sense that this little cluster of rocky islands is a special place. There's a stately air about the old town. Even the very houses seem proud and haughty, as though basking in some past glory. Greens Pond was quite a place in the heyday of the northern fishery and the seal hunt. When St. Stephen's Church was built in 1857, the settlement was already a thriving center with mercantile firms, a customs house, and a fleet of foreign-going vessels. Greens Pond faded as the Labrador fishery and the seal fishery faded. Its population declined, and some feared that the centralization fever of the 50s and 60s would seal its fate. But this tough little island has bounced back. People have returned and look again to the sea for their livelihood. Years ago, on a day like this, the men would be out seal hunting, for this is a great spot for seals. But this once important industry has been severely crippled, an important source of income lost. Veteran seal hunter Melvin Burry is angry that the seal fishery was allowed to die. And I believe there's a good many seals out there these years, is there? Yes, boy. Yes, there's more seals there this last, uh, this last five or six years than ever been there this last, well, in my memory, I go back as far as the last 50 years, yeah. You've been sealing for 50 years? Yeah, that's what I've been at it. I was 30, well, 30, 40 when I started at it, yeah. And, and I've been at it ever since. And I never seen the light as was there the last four or five years. But you can't do anything with it. You can't get no, well, no point in going out. There's not much sense in going out and killing them, you know. I mean, last winter here, there was about 500 seals thrown away here over this wire. 500 pelts? 500, thrown 500 away. pelts thrown away here. And I mean, there could have been 2,000 if people was interested in going and killing them for the, for the seal, the, the, for the pelt, you know. Yeah. How much money would you have made now of years back on that many pelts? Say? Well, but when it comes to years back, you know, it's all kind of according to the amount of years, eh? Yeah. You think, uh, I mean, when I was about, uh, well, in 1935, that's when it was then, ice hunting ships came in there, eh? And the wheat coats came in that year. We had, we had me and my father, we lived on Popham Island there, then, with the fog on us, too. I put in nine years out there. And we all the seals ashore that time, we got 52, eh? It comes to a dollar a pelt. I see, but now when does and it... Now this last, well, last 50, 20, 25 years, even up, you know, the last $25 a pelt, eh? Yeah. So there's a lot of money being lost oh, now. Oh, my son. Is that have, well, I mean, people would be more interested if you were getting clear of pills, eh? Yeah. I mean, you take, well, last year, it was 500 seals brought in here. Well, if it didn't even, you know, worth anything, $20, $25 a pelt, my God, there couldn't have been 5,000 brought in here. Well, the protest groups wouldn't have set foot on Newfoundland Island if Melvin Burry had his way. Not that it would have stopped what happened, I suppose, for the seal hunt was killed, not here, but in comfortable southern climes. The protest was based on ignorance of life here in the north. Seals were important in the off-season, in the months when you couldn't fish cod and salmon and lobsters. Now it's not worth going out. Nothing to do but wait for spring. Well, not really, for there's firewood to be cut and nets and fishing gear to be made ready. Greenspawn may look deserted on a cold, blustery day in midwinter, but don't be fooled, the men aren't abed. Go up to the twine loft and you'll find them. At least that's where we found Bob Granter and his brothers. They're longliner fishermen. Bob, some people think that fishermen have nothing to do in the wintertime in the spring. Well, you see, that's not right, is it? No, I don't know. I always plenty to do around every day, bite. What's your work now? Oh, we're getting our cod traps ready now for the, the spring fishery. Usually in the spring, though, is a bit early fish. It gets traps like for that, see? What else do you fish for in the spring? Well, we get at lumps and laps or something like a lobster license. And, uh, that's about it now until the cable comes before you get set. Well, some people the, the ground feed early, you know, but we don't usually get ground feed that early. So you're fairly busy then all, all winter? All winter, yeah. Especially after January. Now in the fall, we do a bit of hunting and get a bit of firewood then. Not this time of year, now we get pretty busy getting the gear in, in order. I believe you fellows sort of re-entered the fishery, didn't you? You started off fishing, but you, you gave it up for a while? 
We were fishing when we were, when we were very grown up in Greenspan, then we went to St. John's and went to work in there. And, oh, I spent nine years in there. Came back in 78, myself, my brother and cousin, bought a landliner, and started fishing. I suppose you were discouraged when you were younger that the Greenspan looked like it was on the way out. Yeah, well, it? that's what, well, the, in Greenspan, then back in, in the 60s, man, the resettlement was on the go, and education seemed to be the thing then. All, all the older people and my father and I, well, move away from Greenspan, there's nothing here for you, and the fishery, don't, don't, don't be at this. So we went, went elsewhere, but the, the pressure wasn't much greener, so we're back again. Hopefully we're staying now. The granters left, and they came back to pick up the skills and the way of life they'd left behind. It happened to a lot of people here in Greenspond. Here's one reason for the Greenspond revival, the causeway to Shambler's Cove, the end of isolation. No longer are people trapped on the island when the wind is too strong or the ice too bad. This has meant a lot to the people of Greenspond. They're now linked with hospitals and other services. The causeway has opened up new resources too. Take firewood, for instance. While trees may not be very tall or thick here on the mainland of Bonavista North, growth is considerably better than on Green's Pond. In fact, there's probably not a stick of wood on the entire island. Now it's just a matter of loading the snowmobile aboard the truck and heading for the woods. If you should get hungry for a fresh meal of smelt, you can join the people from other communities as they converge on Southwest Pond. It's the best place around, they say, for these tiny fish. A grand bit of sport for people of all ages. The old days of isolation are over for Greens Pond, and most admit it's a good thing, that it's given the old island a new lease on life. When we return, it will be summer, We'll see what Green's Pond is like then, and we'll go out and boat to Manchuri and the place they call Luff Up. Much has been written about the Green's Pond saga, of the ships and the men that sailed from here. The waterfront today is not exactly a forest of spurs. Even though the population has rebuilt in recent years, there's still less than half as many living here now as lived here in its heyday a century or so ago. Uncle Cease Carter can't remember back that far, but he's old enough to have watched Green's Pond swing from good times to bad and back again. His youth was in the days of sail. He can entertain you for hours with stories of ships and the men who sailed them. Many a famous mariner has been raised on these rocky shores. There may not be much physical evidence to show that Green's Pond was once a hub of the north, but there are many memories, and they go back a long, long way. One of my great, great grandfathers or somebody like that lived on Lewis Island there in 16. He had a schooner built in 1687, 1697, a schooner called the uh, Indian Queen, a fishing schooner. And she went to Labrador and was lost in Indian Tickle. Now, I don't know how many years she went to Labrador before she was lost. I don't know that. Could have been the first year, could have been five or six years after that. Yes, remarkable, wasn't it? In the 30, 20 years, Green's Pond's uh, uh, Iber was full of vessels. Coasting vessels, fishing vessels. But now you wouldn't fish around here, would you? Where would the, where would the men fish? Oh no, they would all go up to Labrador. Up to Labrador fish trip. Yes. Was it a prosperous place? Prosperous place, always a prosperous place. Yes, sir, until the, the dirty tardies came. That ruined everything. You ruined everybody. Huh? But she's come back again now, see? 
lot of people leave. A lot of people went away. And a lot of people came back to meet them by coming back again, living there. Uncle Cease Carter is proud and delighted to see people return to Greens Pond and to hear the sounds of engines in the harbor once more. Marshall Granter, the father of Bob, who we spoke with earlier in the Twineloft, he's one of those who returned to the sea. While Bob and the boys fish from a longliner, Marshall prefers to fish alone in a small boat. He agreed to take me out and give me a taste of a fisherman's life on Greens Pond Island. Aside from a bit of fog which threatened to obscure the marks, it was a beautiful day on the water. A few miles out, we came upon two of Marshall's neighbors, Philip Burry and Sam Burry. It didn't seem like they were doing much with it. The fish were scarce around Greens Pond this summer. I could tell, though, that Marshall wasn't used to bobbing around on the ocean very long without a line in his hand. You have a try, eh? I'm going to throw it in my jigger and see if I can jig one. It's not too promising, though, fellow boy, is it? No, boy. No, my son. No. Only Tom got. Yeah. That's the few got through the draggers, Nate. He is, boy. Yeah. Uh, small fish, though, isn't it? Yes, my son. Small fish. Now, with the few that I get out there, you know, there's better fish than this. Yeah. What I get out there, I don't get very many. But the small fish got the there all the year by. Not the only, not the only time has it's all. Deep water here? Not, not, not desperate. I'm going to say it's not desperate deep there. Not down to the middle now of a churi, you know? Churi, that's what you call the ground. Manchuri. Manchuri. Yeah. Named after the battle they had during the First World War, you oh, know? I see. I don't know if they won the battle or lost the battle or whatever, but the, you know, the, someone found this spot of ground. That's what he called it. Manchuri. Let's see if you win the battle now with the fish. I'll try it anyway. Another one coming. Thomas Trout. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Look at that. Small one, is it? Small one again. That's right. Not too bad, though. Another one there. We brought but, you a bit of luck. You'll do all right. I hope you do anyway. Yeah. You're getting a few on the trawl out there, I reckon. Yeah, they get a steady one, boy. It used to be a good place, too. One time. When you get them on the trawl now, will you get them on the jigger, too? Or? No, not necessarily. You could jig, not, not jig them, but you'd still trawl, eh? Yeah. And sometimes you'll jig it and not trawl. Mm -hmm. I suppose it depends if they're going for the bait or not. Yeah, that's right. That's right. If there's any live bait around, you know, not very often you'll trawl it then, but you'll jig it. I see. I suppose there's lots of fishing ground around here in Greenspan, though, is there? Oh, yes, boy. There's a nice bit of fishing ground. Because now, well, we've, we've used the fish as well right from the Offord Island, different times of the year, right on down to Pouch Island, Flowers Island, down around there, you know. So there's there's quite a bit of ground. Well, it, there's ground enough. If there was lots of fish around, you wouldn't see a boat all day. You'd be on a spot of ground by yourself all day. Eh? But the way it is now, you've got to trade around. And so trade around we did, going from one spot of ground to another, looking for fish. With the extra weight aboard and the fog covering the horizon, Marshall couldn't find his trawl on the offer ground, the place they call Luff Up. Now what do we do? Betty Joy Vaughan, Betty Joy Vaughan, do you read me now? Over. Yeah, that's right, yeah, I got your phone, yeah. It's like I'm always going out here, never did never did for a long thing, see? Uh, George, you're from another place, don't you? And you're on the, you're on the door, right? I'm lucky enough, I saw him on the leader of the paper. And it's picked up the one we want, anyway. Well, I'm trying to go with mine, ain't he on the door? You're luckier than what I is, I can't find my boy. I'm up here now, I don't know where I'm to. 
No, I ain't tried neither line, but I got the CBC fellows out here with me this morning. We are talking to Phil, and they're Phil not doing much, yeah, but under pound. But I can't, can't find me boy. Over. I could be off or down, see, aren't I? If I'm off or down over the bottom, you know, I knock one down, I knock one down no bottom with 50 feet on. But I, I'm hoping that it's going to clear enough to, for me to find it at the minute. Over. Yeah, I'll give you a shout by and by if I, if I get something to be boy and that. Find out what's going on. Yeah, over and out, Adder. Well, we steamed on, trying to find Luff Up. I certainly wasn't much help. In fact, I figured Cape Bonavista would probably loom out of the fog any minute. But I should have known better. After a spell of dodging back and forth, of trading around and testing the bottom, Marshall spotted his boys on a luff up. We're seven miles or so from land now. There's no shoal water further out. Luff up is our best chance for a few fish. It's head. So you got one, Marshall, anyway. There's one coming. I hope to get him. Yeah. They're pretty scarce, though, aren't they? Pretty scarce, but they're tiny. Not in the towel. There's usually big fish out here, Marshall. Usually big fish out there, yes. What do you figure happened? I, I don't know. I guess the most of the big fish is caught off. Offshore you mean? Or? Offshore, that's what it really means. I think that's all we're getting is a bit of drainage and not much of that. Now some people say there's lots of fish for everybody, offshore and inshore, but you don't. don't I don't that. believe it. I don't believe it, sir. Because the reason why I don't believe it, because every year the last seven or eight years, every year is getting scarcer and scarcer. This was pretty good ground, I believe, was it one? This time? was the best. This was choice ground. How much fish would you get here now in a good year, years ago? Oh, well, any day you can get out here, you will save on three or four thousand pound fish with your trawl. Two or three men would ten lines to trawl out here and you'd save. Motorboat load. We used to use a 30 foot boat. And uh, there's no trouble going to you there on trial. And what do you get now? A couple hundred pounds. There's one coming off there now, a good one. Yeah, finally got a big one. Season coming, if I can get him. I'm hoping to get him. The bait is gone on this stretch of trial. Yeah, I am. There must be a few more fish around. Something picked it off there. Bottom stuff too, you know. Oh, that's a better one. That's a better one. That's more like it, eh? Yeah, that's the kind I like to see. Well, you got something when you get a few of them. I say there's another one coming there. That's the one the draggers never got. You know, they say they got a quota. They got a quota for, 
for the dragger so they have got a quarter. But what about all that the draggers drags that they don't know nothing about? It gets away, it lets go, too small, and shovels off the decks and all this stuff. When he gets the quarter caught, he got two. You like this life, though, don't you? Loves it. Loves it, sir. You tried other work, too, I believe. I have tried, yes, I have tried a lot of other things. Well, probably I made better money, but uh, I didn't like the work so well. So I come back to the fishery again. When I was raising my family, the price of fish was low. The job make two ends meet, so I, I, I went at other things. Construction work, work in the mines, and carpenter work. But uh, I come back to the fishery again. And so Marshall Granter has returned to Green's Pond and the fishery. So have many others. While the cod fishery hasn't been good in recent years, the high prices offered make a difference. But it's by catching other species that many small boatmen here manage to survive. For lumpfish row fetches a good price. And if you have a license, there's the lobster and the salmon fisheries. There's flatfish to catch too, and capelin, and sometimes mackerel. Added together, it's a living. And that's all that Marshall wants for this is the life he loves. He's glad he returned to Greenspawn. A final word from Uncle Cease. He's lived here in Greenspawn all his life. He's seen the good times and the bad. What does Uncle Cease think of it all? Well, sir, in the, in the, the years the resettlement came up, eh? That was Joey's idea to get all the people off of the highland. And he thought he was going to get them off of Greenspawn too. He didn't do it. <laughs> uh, I'll never forget, I got a phone call one night in that resettlement time from Wick Collins, staff writer, even telegram. He said, Are you see Scarlet? I said, Yes, sir. Look here, he said. He tells me, he said, that the uh, grease pond is be go going to become a bird rock. I said, who in the hell told you that? Just like that. Well, boy, he said, that's all the news up around there. My dear man, I says, look, there'll be people living on grease pond 50 years from now. What, he said? I said it. Boy, he said, am I, am I glad to hear that? He said, that's it. And I'm going to be right, too. <laughs> 25 years are gone now. <laughs> yes. You've got a lot of fond memories of this place, I guess. Yeah, my son, there's more than I'll never repeat again, I suppose. Fond memories. What are you talking about, son? Yes. <laughs>